Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today I shall be talking about automation and auto analyzers in a clinical laboratory. So let us proceed. Let us begin with the definition of automation. The term automation is applied to the field of clinical chemistry that describes the process whereby an analytical instrument performs many tests with minimal involvement of an analyst. Now, this means that a lot of processes that are involved in analytical processes in a lab are done automatically. So the next question is why do we need automation? So automation is generally needed or required to reduce the human error and reduce the requirement of personnels so that we can give more accurate results and precise results to the patient. So what is an auto analyzer? Uh, auto analyzer is a device that performs laboratory analysis of samples automatically with mi minimum human intervention. So now you know the difference between automation and auto analyzer. In automation, every process is automated, whereas in auto analyzer, it is an equipment that performs certain uh, parts of the analysis with minimum human intervention. Let us look at the phases of the analytical process going on in the lab. So these uh, phases are divided into three types that is the pre-analytical phase, analytical phase and post-analytical phase. In the pre-analytical phase again there are further subdivision. Uh, the first one is preparation of sample. Uh, this includes centrifugation, aspiration of serum, decapping of tubes, splitting of serum or specimen, uh, barcoding of aliquot tubes if uh, the automation has barcoding uh, and sorting of the tubes as per the uh, numbers or codes given. The second uh, phase, uh, pre-analytical phase includes the transport system where in the samples are transported by a conveyor belt and uh, the third one is a tube recapping machine where once the aliquots are taken in the sample cups, the tubes are capped again and then we come to the second phase that is the analytical phase where the testing of the uh, sample or the analysis of the sample is carried out and then we come to the third phase that is the post analytical phase in this phase there is reporting of the results uh, as per the samples received and then storing of the samples so there is a reporting and storage system now we come to the types of automation so this is the first type where that is there is no automation here. Now no automation doesn't mean that there are no auto analyzers. So there's a difference between automation and auto analyzer. This we shall see in the preceding slides. So uh, in the case of no automation, uh, every section is separated and there are different people in charge of each section. So as you can see that the pre-analytical part has different people assigned clinical chemistry part has different people assigned to do the work. The immunochemistry part again has different people assigned. The hematological part also has different people assigned to do various hemostasis and hematological testing. So each part involves trained personals. Although the auto analyzer is used, but no analyzer is integrate and every section is separate. So there is no automation. Now we come to the second type of automation. There, this is known as the partial automation and this is task targeted automation or it is known as the local automation. And here again you can see that there are different sections and all these sections have a uh, different pre-analytical workstation and there are fewer number of people involved here compared to the lab which has no automation. So there are three different sections shown in this diagram 
chemistry, immunochemistry are together, hematology is together and hemostasis uh, is another section and there are few number of people required. So the next type that is a total laboratory automation. In total laboratory automation there is combination of analyzers used. The combinations may be chemistry, hematology, immunochemistry and hemostasis analyzers. Apart from these combination of analyzers there is also the pre-analytical specimen management which is automated. The transportation system of samples is also automated and the process control software which controls the entire process of pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical phases is also automated as you can see in this schematic diagram where there are different analyzers, the hematological analyzers, then there is a pre-analytical workstation. It also includes the hemostasis analyzer, then there is the chemistry analyzer and the immunochemistry analyzer. So all this process is integrated, they are carried out together, they are not done in separate sections and the entire process is automation. So there is complete laboratory automation. Now uh, this is total laboratory automation where uh, which we have already discussed that there are different phases of analysis uh, and all these are uh, automated. It starts right from loading of the sample to the transport of sample, centrifugation of sample, refrigeration and storage of sample, capping and uncapping of sample, and then specimen sorting, uh, aliquoting and finally the uh, online analyzer where the reports are generated and the robotic analyzer interface where the testing is carried out. So the entire process is automated right from starting till the end. This is, uh, this encompasses the total laboratory automation. Now uh, automation also exists in microbiology section if you are not aware of that. Uh, I'm just giving you a small example for your information that there can be a barcoding system, vortexing, recapping, decapping and it is run in batch analysis where pre-barcoded samples are loaded. It can be slide or it can be broth or it can be plate and all this is carried out by an automated system. Uh, some part may be manual, uh, for example in plating there it may be manual and um, uh, this is another type of uh, automation in the microbiology lab where it is a continuous flow uh, analyzer and all this is done by inoculation. So they are carrying out the same type of work that is that of inoculation of the samples and it can be a slide or a plate or a broth. So uh, these are the different types of automations. Now this is the modular automation system. This is the fourth type and in modular automation system is generally used for small laboratories. The modular automation system consists of integrated analyzers. The integration may be heterogeneous uh, where uh, different analyzers doing different type of testing are integrated that is chemistry. For example, chemistry, hematology, immunochemistry analyzers are integrated. Uh, whereas in homogeneous uh, analyze integration, uh, all the analyzers are carrying out the same work. For example, chemistry, chemistry and again chemistry. So there are three chemistry analyzers that are integrated. Apart from uh, this integrated analyzers, there is modular work cells and there is post and pre-analytical automation may also exist. And this is a schematic diagram for the same. You can see that there is hematology part, sample preparation part, which is the pre-analytical part, uh, primary tube loading part, chemistry, coagulation and hematology. So all these sections are integrated and customized as per the requirement of the lab owner. So it is analogous to a modular kitchen like you see uh, in your own homes that kitchens are 
modular as per your requirement. Now we will come to the classification as you can see this is the uh, A uh, that is this is one type of classification uh, where auto analyzers can be either continuous flow analyzers or discrete analyzers uh, and discrete analyzers again can be semi automated fully automated and fully automated again is further classified as batch analyzer and random access analyzer. So this is one type of classification. Now we will go into the details of each. So let us see what is continuous flow analyzer first. So this is a continuous flow analyzer equipment. This provides one analysis per analyte for one sample at a time, which means multiple tests cannot be carried with one sample. Only one test can be carried with one sample at a time. The flowing carrier solution passes through these small tubes continuously and the principle is therefore known as continuous flowing or continuous flow analyzer. That is the principle because the solution or the reagents are continuously flowing through the small tubes. So this is the schematic diagram of a continuous flow analyzer. Here the sample is injected into the flowing carrier solution. From here it is injected. The sample mixes with the diluents and the reagents. Here it, the sample will mix with the diluent and the reagent. And this is sent through the tubing and mixing coils and then to the incubator. The machine prevents carryover effect between different samples by injecting air bubbles. So, Mm, there is an air bubble between two samples and therefore uh, this uh, it is a separated each sample is separated by an air, by an air bubble now there are the disadvantages of this continuous flow analyzers that is they do not function according to the patient's tests that is you cannot complete all the tests of one patient at a time there is no stat facility uh, which means that uh, if any sample has to be done on an emergency, you cannot change your preference. Once you have started uh, the procedure, if any sample needs to be done in emergency, you cannot change your priority. Once you have programmed it, that has to complete. Only then that emergency sample can be run. So th that facility is known as STAT facility wherein you can uh, put an emergency sample before other samples if needed and this facility is not available in continuous flow analyzer. There is no random access available. There is significant carryover problem despite the bubbles between two samples and due to continuous flow of reagents there is lot of wastage of reagents. So uh, these are the disadvantages of the continuous flow analyzers. Because of these reasons, it was dis uh, replaced by the discrete analyzers. Now these discrete analyzers, um, there is uh, analysis for same analyte or sample takes place at different cups. It means each analysis even for same analyte, the sample will take place at different cups. And this is the main principle of di discrete analysis. There is no air bubble. Reactions do not take place in tubings, but they take place in sample cups. So there is discretion. Each sample is separated and each test is also separated. So it is not taking place in the same cup. Uh, run, uh, in discrete analyzers, multiple tests can be run and done for one sample at a time or multiple samples for one test can be done at a time. These are the most popular type of analyzers and they have completely replaced the continuous flow analyzers. Now discrete analyzers are, are further classified as semi-automated analyzer. It is called semi-automated analyzer because the initial stages of the specimen analysis is performed by the laboratory technician. So 
some parts of the analysis is done manually and the remaining parts are done by the equipment now let us see which are those stages that are performed by the technician it includes pipetting of reagent specimens mixing of specimen with reagent incubation now displaying of test results printing and memorizing these results are done by the machine so this part is automated whereas this part is manual so since some steps are manually done while the others are automatically performed by the machine this is known as a semi automated analyzer the semi automated analyzer performs end point reactions they can do linear and non linear tests they carry out tests in both visible and ultraviolet regions uh, and they can carry out monochromatic and bichromatic mode tests so these are some good facilities that are present in semi automated analyzers the fully automated analyzer these automated analyzers perform all the functions of semi auto analyzer as well as the initial stages of specimen analysis which was being carried out by the technician and this fully automated analyzer is a of two types that is batch anal analyzer and random access analyzer here i would like to tell you that the simplest type of analyzer of biochemistry test is known as colorimeter which works on the principle of lambert beer's law and all these equipments that is the semi auto analyzer fully auto analyzer or the continuous flow analyzer they are modifications and advanced versions of the colorimeter uh, the lecture for colorimeter will be provided in the link description given now let us see what is a batch analyzer uh, before we get into the details this type of system is not used much these days so it is outdated uh these analyzers perform only one type of test at a time so for example if you are doing glucose uh, of one patient then you have to finish carrying out the estimation of glucose for all the patients so only one type of an test can be done at a time uh, accommodated only one type of reagent at a time so only one reagent can be used at a time you cannot do glucose urea created in all uh, together so if you are doing glucose then you have to finish estimation of glucose for all the tests advantages large number of samples can be carried out in analysis can be carried out in batches and it is done tested accurately and precisely disadvantage it, it does not function according to patient tests so if one patient has more than uh, one or two tests requested then that cannot be done the stat facility is not available uh, that is immediate testing and reporting is not available this facility is not available and the facility of random access is not available because it is a batch analyzer and it analyzes only in batches the random access analyzer that is a second type uh, apart from the batch analyzer in random access Uh, the random access analyzer is a device used for carrying out diagnostic tests in clinical chemistry laboratory in which the specimens can be accessed at random and that is they can be accessed out of sequence with each other so that uh, once you have set the sequence uh, if you want to change the sequence for some reason then in random access analyzer it can be done now we come to the steps in automated analysis so uh, the steps in automated analysis include sample identification uh, determine the test to perform and all this is fed inside the uh, computer or the uh, laboratory information system that is lis so whatever uh, first we have to identify what tests are been requested for various samples received this can be done by the barcode or it can be done manually depending on the facility available in the lab 
then we determine the tests um, and then feed it in the uh, computer and then the analysis part starts that is the reagent system uh, delivery specimen measurement and delivery chemical reaction phase measurement phase signal processing and data handling phase and then send results to LIS or note it down manually. So these are the phases of automated analysis. Now what are the parts of an auto analyzer? So the parts of an auto analyzer include a reagent and a sample tray, reaction tray, washing system or the laundry system. It includes robotic arms known as the reagent arm, sample arm and the mixing arm. It also has incubator, lamp, filters and a computer so software control system which may be linked with the laboratory information system LIS or there can be manual making of reports. Now let us look at the parts of the auto analyzer. So this is the uh, first wheel which is known as the sample wheel or the sample tray and the outer, the periphery part there are small slots uh, for keeping the samples. You can see here two sample cups are also kept and the inner part, inner part has a slots for keeping the reagents. So this is known as the re uh, reagent tray and the sample tray. So in the same wheel there both these reagents and samples are kept. Now along uh, with this wheel there is a second wheel or tray which is known as the reaction tray. In this reaction tray there is slot for large number of cuvettes in, the, in which the reaction will occur. And this is how the cuvettes look like. Uh, so uh, here there are two uh, robotic arms for reagent arm and sample arm. The reagent arm will dispense reagent in this cuvette and the sample arm will dispense sample in this cuvette and the reaction will occur. Now this is the washing station as you can see here. Uh, this is the schematic diagram of the washing system or the laundry system which will wash all the cuvettes uh, whenever the testing is over and uh, it has various other functions which we will discuss in the next slide. And this is the mixing arm uh, or the mixing needle which mixes the reagent and the sample. Wash station. Now what is the job of the wash station or the laundry? The wash station aspirates reaction wastes and dispenses the water, washes the cuvettes. It aspirates and dispenses the rinsing water and then it dispenses water for measuring cell blank and it also aspirates all the blank to dry the cuvette. The other feature of a fully automated analyzer is the robotic arm. Um, here the integration of robots is used into the analytical system and instead of human hands these are the arms which carry out the work of the human hands of dispensing reagent, sample and mixing. So they act like hands and uh, the number of arms depend upon the type of machine. Uh, some uh, machines may have just uh, one arm, single arm or two armed or three or four arms. So it depends on uh, what the uh, because uh, what the lab wants to acquire. Now there's also an incubator so if any test needs incubation there's an inbuilt incubator where temperature will be provided for the reaction to occur. Now this is the lamp as light source so generally in fully automated analyzer we use a tungsten halogen lamp. The tungsten halogen lamp uh, where the Tungsten is used for visible range and halogen lamp is used for carrying out analysis in ultraviolet region. Uh, this is the reaction cuvette. This is the diffraction grating system and this is how the very um, photo detector and 
this is how the absorbance is measured and it is converted into the reading after calculations. Now these are the filters. So we have the ultraviolet and visible range filters. This is how the filters are aligned and we can choose the filters depending on what we are analyzing. And the final and the most important or among the most important parts is the computer and the computer software control. So all the information has to be fed here and then the program is run every day for various samples to be analyzed. As you can see here that these blue marks indicate that the tests are done. The red mark here means there is some warning. Uh, the green mark means the test has uh, started and the yellow marks means the test is yet to start. So this is how the color coded uh, uh, color coded uh, uh, programming is done. Now the second classification is the uh, of auto analyzers is the open system and the closed system. The open uh, system auto analyzers are those analyzers which can purchase reagents from any company. So it uh, is quite cost effective and the closed system uh, auto analyzers for closed system auto analyzers, the reagents have to be purchased from a particular company and uh, any other uh, reagents will not be accepted by the equipment. So machine will not run the test. So that is why it is known as a closed system because only one type of reagent of only one brand can be used here. Now let us come to the advantages of auto analyzers. It uses less sample and less reagent volume. Uh, less volume of reagent that is 0.5 ml to 1 ml only. The, there's robotic technology that is used to perform repetitive tasks like pipetting, mixing, dispensing. Large number of samples can be tested in a short time and therefore it reduces the turnaround time or TAT time, which means the patient can get his report early, his or her report early so that the treatment can start quickly. Now the methods performed for automation are accurate, precise, sensitive and specific. There are minimal errors found, manual errors are reduced, equipment variations of different types of pipetting and yeah. is also reduced and person to person variation is also minimized. There's a very good facility in auto analyzers that is the bichromatic testing and through this uh, two wavelengths can be used uh, to measure a single analyte and this eliminates photometric problems while analyzing uh, in samples that are lipemic, hemolyzed and icteric. Now there is uh, the other facility is that it can store multi standard calibration curves and quality control in the memory. Uh, IQC and that is internal quality control and external quality assurance programs can be easily implemented and the wide range of molecules can be analyzed by using various techniques in the equipment such as immunochemistry, turbidimetry, chemiluminescence, ion selective electrode, nephilometry and not to forget that it has the uh, facility of STAT that is if we want uh, any patient's uh, report immediately then we can stop all the other testing and first complete the testing of that urgent um, report an urgent reporting can be done. So that means the STAT facility is there. So thank you. Hope you like the lecture and all your doubts are cleared re regarding automation.